Italian pens. How many do you own? Do you like them? Well, 1958 or so, there was the Ultra Pen Company, U-L-T-R-A, and they came out with this particular pen circa 1958 or so. You know, actually, we have one of those that's already been in our family. One of you viewers had sent this to Matthew, and uh, it's pretty much an identical model. The, the only difference I can see, I mean, the pen cap is the same length, but over here you've got the ink window and the pen cap only comes down as far as just past those little threads and there's a little ink window here before a red band well this particular pen when you go to cap it only goes as far as that little ink window there so you get to see uh, your ink level whereas on this one it covers up that ink window Okay, not that I understand why they were slightly that different um, or the difference in their manufacture, but I went ahead and uh, I ordered this. And this was only $7 plus shipping. So for 7 bucks, I figured, why not? I was already familiar with Matthew, so I said, I don't have one. And it's a good-looking pen. It really is. I mean, it's all metal, so you've got kind of almost a Sheraton pattern going on with this thing. You've got a bifurcated clip that comes down. It's a very functional clip, kind of stiff. And all, it's almost reminds me of, uh, of Waterman because, uh, like on the CFs, you've got that slant on the cap there and a bifurcated clip. Uh, and then you've got a tapered down barrel, but that red really adds that pop uh, in its appearance compared to the rest of that gold. So you open it up and you've got a hooded nib. A nice long slender plastic uh, section here leads down to a hooded nib and uh, I actually was surprised at how well this one wrote for what it is you open it up and it does have a good amount of ink this is one of those where you have a piston rod and there is a, uh, a little uh, piston uh, rubber piston here that comes up and down that shaft so rather than twisting you just pull back like you're going to find actually on um, a lot of pens that were made in India uh, sort of like noodlers pens would have that kind of filling mechanism I can show you on Matthews because it is not inked up so that's what it looks like when it's all the way down and you would pull now you see that? You see you got that rubber gasket or plastic gasket inside of this tube. And that's how you would actuate that is to put it in ink and then draw that way. I will tell you, it's not the most comfortable thing to pull on. <laughs> um, but um, I will tell you too, on mine, it was new old stock and sitting around for 60 plus years never having been used I can tell you that this piston rod was not going to budge so I had to oil it up just a little bit in here where that rod went into that plastic because it was kind of seized up uh, so I put a little bit of oil and worked it in worked it in and it filled up very nicely so I went ahead and uh, said let's go work with it so I did fairly comfortable pen not all that heavy actually it's a very lightweight metal very classy looking I thought it fits very comfortably in the hand I cannot complain about this baby whatsoever so how does this beautiful looking 1950s Italian pen with a semi or a pretty much hooded nib work well let's give it a shot Ultra circa 1958 or so. At least that's what the seller said. They said it was a 1958 manufacturer. Okay, fine. I picked up this one, new old stock. So I was expecting it to be in good shape, and it was. A beautiful condition, writes very well. So for this hooded nib, it writes like a medium nib. Writes very smoothly.
little bit of skip there, so let's try that again. Could have been the way I was holding the pen, could have rotated that just a little bit over here. So, uh, But if you want to get some line variation, I've been using this pen a lot. I mean, a whole lot here recently. Uh, this has been on my desk all week long, and I've been using it extensively for letter writing. I've been using it for uh, log entries. I've been using it for uh, data collection on notepads and that kind of thing. So this one here, I put in some Waterman Mysterious Blue. I... O U S blue it's not a tremendously wet writer but it is a little wetter than some of the others that I've got you can get some line variation out of it like I showed you earlier but another one of these great things about this particular pen it has a good ink capacity as you saw on that tank on it I call it a tank rather than just a reservoir because it's actually a good sized reservoir. Um, and, uh, you know, this particular one has been reliable and smooth. The two things I really like in a pen it's comfortable, comfortable in my hand. So for a $7 pen, I was like, why not? Seven bucks. I mean, Really? You get a really good looking pen, sharp looking pen, uh, and a good performing pen for just $7? Sign me up. So I've got one, Matthew's got one, and a big fan of the Ultra, actually. Made in Italy. If you're looking for a good low-end pen, um, I mean, $7.